Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Career Conversations. I'm Unika Walcott, and today I have here with me the Director of Communications, uh, Amanda Murphy. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. I'm so glad you could join me. Thank you for agreeing to be a part of my, my series. Oh, I'm excited about this series. I've been watching what you've been doing, and I think it's very exciting. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So I, I want to just kind of dive right in. So what does your family think you do when you tell them you're a director of communications at a nonprofit? Well, um, I'm going to start a little bit further back. So I've done marketing for engineering firms since I graduated from college 100 years ago. A um, <laughs> hundred years ago? So, yeah. So when I explained that to people, it was much more challenging for them to understand. Um, lots of eyes rolling in the back of their head, like, I don't care. Um, but director of communications is a little bit easier because I talk to them about uh, the website, the email newsletter, the magazine, social media, um, developing relationships with our members, um, writing articles. So that is what I've told my family now, I think my dad believes I just hang out on Facebook all day, but you know, that's how dads are. If you hear a drill, that's him also. So, Oh, cool. That's awesome. He, he thinks you just hang out on Facebook all day. Like, wouldn't that be an easy job? <laughs> yeah. I did so, to show them um, these, we, we do advocacy as part of our work for North Carolina Forestry Association. And I did get to show them this legislative poster that I created that has all the House and Senate members for the General Assembly on it. And we go hand that out at um, the legislature to help folks kind of see names, districts, um, House or Senate pictures of them. Um, it's a very useful tool. So I think they're starting to understand, but you know. Uh-oh, Unika, you're frozen. Hello. I'm just going to be patient and wait for Unika to get back. Looks like she lost her connection, so she's going to be right back. Ah, technology. Oh, tell us more about what you do while we wait. Thanks, Linda. Good question. Um, so I'm the director of communications for North Carolina Forestry. Um, I help communicate about the education um, we do for both teachers and students in North Carolina um, around forestry and then communicate about the advocacy work that we do. Um, we uh, advocate for our members. So our members are people who own land in North Carolina, people who sell trees. Um, welcome back, Unika. One of the comments was asking me to explain what I did um, at Forestry. So I was kind of going into that a little bit. Oh no, she froze again. So yeah, we advocate for our members. We have forest products, um, people who create forest products. So um, they, we have loggers that take trucks from um, where people cut down trees and take it to mills. We have people who sell wood. We have cabinet door manufacturers, all kinds of unique forest products like dry kiln, firewood. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting. 
Um, one of the things I've gotten to do recently, besides websites, social media, writing articles, is come up with creative ideas to talk to the public and engage folks in forestry in North Carolina. Um, I think a lot of times in forestry, the folks that work in the industry are, um, they like to be out in the woods. They don't really like to toot their own horn. They don't um, spend a lot of time online talking about what they do. So that's kind of where I get to be creative and have fun. Okay, so I'm having a whole lot of fun. My my internet connection is going banana. Oh no. Uh to to do this as effectively as, as it's worked previously. So I might have to think of some alternate ways to manage this going forward. Um, <laughs> um Amanda, thank you so much for for kind of keeping the dialogue going. <laughs> Yeah, I don't mind staying on and just answering the questions in the comments if, or answering the questions that you um, wanted to include because it looks like you're frozen again. Man, I'm sure that's frustrating for you. Um, what types of stories resonate with people is one of the comments. Um, the personal stories always resonate with people. Um, that's one of my goals is to show an authentic picture of who our members are and letting them tell their story is so much more interesting than anything I could um, create. Um, so yeah, well, I, I sit down a lot of times with members and they write the articles themselves just by speaking about what they do and how they support the com their communities. Um, I was talking to this guy at a sawmill recently and out in Western North Carolina, and they were talking about how engaged they were with the community. Um, they noticed a lot of the trucks hauling logs were coming right downtown in their tiny community. And so um, the lumber mill decided to go ahead and get annexed by the community so that they paid taxes. And then they had their trucks kind of go around the town so that it wouldn't be a lot of dirt on the roads. Um, a lot of our members are council members, county commissioners. Um, but yeah, um, so Unika asked, sent me a couple of questions that um, I can answer too. Um, some of the things I've been pushing for are, um, she's back. Yeah. Very stressed. So um yeah honestly i won't pretend like this is not an like we had problems last week i thought i figured out what the the cause was and handled it and obviously i i was wrong about what the cause was i thought it was because my husband was like killing the broadband uh using uh some some vr stuff and i was like okay so you can't do that you have to um <laughs> Like, have to find something else off. to do on Saturday. Like, not that now. I love um, you. Get off. <laughs> yeah. So he's actually gone fishing. And so I thought that was the problem. And I guess it's not. It's got to be like an AT&T thing because I've checked the router. Everything's up and running. It's just in and out. And so it's happy Saturday. The most <laughs> that it likes to fail you. That's been my experience. Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of. I'm trying to find like, a comfortable way to sit in this awkward situation. Like that's the best I can do right now. <laughs> you got that. <laughs> oh my god! So happy Saturday. <laughs> All I can hear is my dad screwdrivering into my wall right there. So we're <laughs> we're gonna do this no matter what. <laughs> this is called sheer determination. <laughs> Yeah, we will survive. Um, oh my god! Like this is a crash course in like maybe why you don't do live television unless you've got like fifty backups. Like, <laughs> um, so I'll be brainstorming how to avoid this next week for sure, uh, and I'll I will come back with solutions. But today, let, let's continue the conversation. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. She said it's all good stuff happens. Uh, that's relieving. I'm glad you're you're here, <laughs> Linda. Very supportive. I hope you get her on career conversations. Oh yeah, it will be so fun. I love Linda. Like, 
that's a whole nother side start, like side story, like on how we've like met virtually, but never, but like, I swear, like whenever I'm thinking about Linda, like she will like email or text me out of nowhere. And I'll be like, this is so creepy. We didn't do this to each other for like the last two years. It's um, amazing when that happens. <laughs> So, yeah, no, love Linda. I think that would be a fun conversation to have, too. Um, so we've talked about what your family thinks you do. We've talked about what you actually do. Yeah, well, um, I wanted to detail a little bit more. So I've been creating okay. these video series um, this year, which is new for um, our association. So one is getting members to answer the question, what does NCFA mean to you? So letting them tell our story more than which is more effective than me telling it um and then i've been doing expert panels virtually on okay. um so we did one on diversity equity and inclusion in forestry which was kind of a new thing um but something we need to think about because a lot of our folks are aging out of the industry um they're oh. retiring um, That's and something maybe I thought about. It's to pass the organization down to. So um, then we also have done some workforce development um, and we're going to do some new cool things the rest of the year, but they haven't been approved yet. So and then <laughs> I want to get my I'm talking in the process of talking to my executive director because he's a lobbyist um, wow. for our industry. And I want him to help explain like what the legislative process is um some of the terms that not a lot of people understand like we just had crossover this week um so yeah i think that would be interesting because not a lot of people know what those words mean and the more now, what you is crossover crossover okay i'm gonna butcher it but i'm pretty sure it's where they vote on bills and they have to get out of one house ah to make it into the other house before crossover happens, which was Thursday. Otherwise they can't look at it maybe the rest of the year. I don't know. Okay, I made that uh, up. So okay, I'm gonna so let my we're gonna Google it. Do that. <laughs> we're gonna Google it and it's related to like legislative processes. Yes. Okay, that helps me understand what, what I'm looking for. They were looking at hundreds of bills a day and voting and voting and voting. It was like it was pretty um chaotic i think i mean a hundred of anything in a day is quite a bit mm -hmm. honestly if you've got to give any thought to it it's not like counting a hundred pennies <laughs> no <laughs> these you change just, people's lives so right right so no that that's pretty cool so you've got a lot of great activities coming up at the at the north carolina forestry um what else do you like? What else is a part of your work day? Like and workload, you're planning these cool events. You've done a DEI event. It was just diversity, equity and inclusion for people who aren't familiar with the acronym. Um. Yeah, um, day to day, sometimes I'm stuffing envelopes for invoices to members like working in a nonprofit. Um, we're we don't have a great huge staff. We are staffing up right now, but um, it's all hands on deck a lot of times. And I kind of like that. Like there's a lot of teamwork. You get to know people. We all have lunch together and um, get work done. You know, like sometimes I'm putting a printer cartridge in the printer. I'm not good at that either, but I do it. <laughs> oh, that's nice. So you kind of like really have a feel for like what's actually happening day to day, like in the grind part of the organization, as well as kind of the high level communications pieces. Right. Okay. So how has that been like a shift from, from engineering for you? What has that been like? <laughs> <laughs> Was that a dangerous question? <laughs> no, um, I'm going to just speak my truth. So in my experience with engineering firms, um, I didn't get a lot of uh, room for creativity. Like my job was writing proposals and that was kind of the lane they wanted you to stay in for marketing. Um, and a lot of times the firms, in my experience, were ones that were more conservative and not really thinking outside the box. And um, in what I get to do now, I bring ideas to my executive director and he 
you know, we always have to look at budget about whether or not we can afford to do it if we have the budget for it. But a lot of times these things don't cost a lot of money, like a virtual panel. Um, it's our resources that that do it. So um, and Linda asked what social media platforms have the best engagement reach for you? Um, LinkedIn has been blowing up for us and I've never seen that with a company page in my experience, like speaking of engineering firms, like a lot of what they post, I'm just going to go ahead and say it is the same stuff. Everybody posts like so-and-so got their PE. We won this award. It's we, 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 um, we, 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 and, <laughs> But what we do is more our member stories and our stories and like something else I got to do that was cool that I actually didn't get approval for. I nominated my boss last year <laughs> um, for Triangle Business Journal 40 under 40 and he got it. Oh, and wow. So that's going to be a social media thing. Like it's not really we're a statewide organization, but it helps build attraction and attention to this organization. So I'm always looking for different ways to kind of engage and educate the public about what we do. That, that's really cool. So congratulations on your successful pitch for the 40 under 40 for, for your boss. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. I've tried it in the past and was not so successful. So, so what do you I think, think it was the, the timing was good. Is the timing this time for you? Yeah, like and the individual. Like in the past, I think the person that I put up was maybe just not ready. Ah, that makes sense. That makes great sense. Um, so we've talked about what you do now, what you used to do. What did you want to be when you grew up? Um, good question. Um, I was thinking about this the other day. So um, my 10-year-old self, and I think about this because when you're 10, this is before the world kind of gets a hold of you with its shoulds, the shoulds. Yeah, you, know? like you, should, you should do this or study that because you won't make money doing this or you should because you're a good speaker or bad at that. Just, yeah. Don't take risks. Don't ask so many questions. Girls are not leaders. They're caregivers. All those shoulds. Yeah. But, um. Before all that got into my head, which is just our society that we have to be educated about, um, I wanted to be president of the United States of America. Ooh, and wow. mainly because, you know, I saw wars happening uh, when I was younger. I saw not face to face, but on the news, I saw injustices. I saw people being judged because of the color of their skin or because they were in a wheelchair or because they couldn't see or, and I just was like, nobody, everybody's letting this happen. Like put me in charge. I'll make it stop. Like I'll give people a chance and I'll make things okay. And you know, that's what 10 year old me wanted to do. So I think now Today, I still feel called to public service, and that's a personal goal of mine. So, watch for me in the next couple of years. <laughs> okay, I will be on the lookout for you. We we blipped out, I think, for a second on the broadcast, but I, I caught most of everything that you're saying as far as when you were ten, wanting to to you know be president and seeing wars was a thing that prompted you to be president. Like that's a pretty cool response to something so tragic, like. I remember when the, Af the war in uh, Afghanistan started. It was like the same day my grandfather died, and I also threw my retainer in the trash can that day. Ooh, it was not a good <laughs> it day. A day. <laughs> it was not a good day. But you have taken that experience and, and like, it's helped move you into a direction that's, that's been really positive. That's great. Oh, speaking of positive, Linda commented. She said also um, to find your hobby as an adult, you should uh, look back to what you love when you were 10. I think that's a, a great piece of advice. <laughs> I don't I don't even remember if I had hobbies. My friends teased me. They're like, you were born grown. You came here with a cell phone and a briefcase. So uh, <laughs> that yeah. was your hobby was to be career oriented. <laughs> I think so. 
<laughs> I was it was like, what are you playing? Like teacher, church, like <laughs> um, building stuff. Like, <laughs> oh, I, I had like a whole like apartment. I had to like design like out of cardboard boxes and shoe boxes. I used to like take um, like the newspaper bags, you know, and you get them delivered to your door. And they come in like the plastic bags. I used to take those plastic bags and like design dresses for my dolls. And it would be like, and then like, even like in the ha little cardboard houses I would build, I had like art. Like I like took a little puff paint, cut out like little like squares and like made like paintings for the walls. It was crazy. Um, <laughs> Maybe you should be an architect or an interior designer. Mm, no, now I can't even get this place together. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, you can't like even look at this couch. right now. Like you, you can't see it. Oh my! Yes, yeah, this is our this is our first couch. We'll have to tell that story another day. Um, <laughs> about the couch. <laughs> this is this is the 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 first apartment couch. It's now in the house, so it it's it survived. <laughs> okay, but we're not here to talk about my furniture <laughs> <laughs> or or my lack of decoration. I just moved in January though, so cut me some slack. <laughs> Black cut. There you go. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I'm laughing too hard. Uh, so we were talking about your your wanting to be president when you grew up. What has influenced your career path and like where you landed so far? Um. Well, I think I took the safe route when I graduated college, and that's kind of so. I took a stint off about five or six years when I had babies um because I just couldn't imagine the idea and of not seeing them take their first steps and all Aww. that fun stuff so I got to do that and I'm really glad I did even though that was harder than anything else I've ever done in my entire life um because it was like Groundhog Day people would be like oh the weekend I'm like eh, what like what <laughs> there's weekend? No there's weekend. yeah these babies get up at 6 a.m no matter what but um, yeah, probably about three to five years ago, I started to be like, I want to try like nonprofit world. And I, I did, I got nominated to do um, the Leadership Raleigh program, which is a, a really amazing program to, for networking and for getting to know the community here in Raleigh with regards to nonprofits. And a lot of those deal with like, education, homelessness, um, with like social services, they deal with media. Um, I've met so many amazing people through that program and I'm on the um, alumni board right now for them. So we're recruiting, message me privately if you're interested, I'll help you get set up with an application. But um, yeah, I think that exposure to the different nonprofits and the need in this community, even though we live in an affluent, affluent-ish area, um, there's still a ton of people who have nothing, who, you know, just need support. And yeah. once I saw that, I started to pay attention more to nonprofits and tried to kind of see where I could get my foot in the door. And this opportunity with forestry came up and, um, it's not really serving like a social need, but it is an environmental issue, which I think is interesting. And I get to wear cowboy boots. So, yeah, I saw your updated like, you know, headline. I was like a, a good uh, any day in cowboy boots is a good day. So where did you like when did you fall in love with cowboy boots? We got to talk about this. <laughs> uh, I've had them for many, many years. Like I love country music. Um Although it's annoying sometimes too, but um, I, like I like country bluegrass. music. I like bluegrass music. Um, but yeah, I, the most, the coolest thing I get to do with my job, and you asked this, like my favorite thing that I get to do is I throw those cowboy boots on and I drive like two hours out of Wake County to sit down and have an interview with one of our members. And we, walk around a sawmill and you get filthy and your car gets filthy or you walk around in the woods and they call it cruising timber. And I'm like, that's cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have to check my Wake County bias though, because I'll tell you, um, we have, we are in, in an affluent County and yeah. there's 
so many great opportunities. There's amazing libraries and teachers and good roads and jobs and schools. Um, but you you got to rural North Carolina and there's different benefits. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but there are wide open spaces and there's something about that that's just good for your soul. I think that that's a perspective a lot of people would never have of like, okay, like rural North Carolina, I'm going there because why? And you're saying, look, this is a place that, that's good for you. I think that's a, a super positive thing to share. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, and I'm not talking politics, but I, I, I'm going to try not to. But I think something that about checking my way county bias, too, is like I have a certain I have certain beliefs and I don't agree with a lot of beliefs um, but I love listening to people and their reasoning behind things because nobody I've met is stupid. Nobody. Right. They're right. passionate and we disagree, but I think it's important for us to listen to each other, you know, because we always find common ground, always. And I think that's been a huge focal point that's been missed in the current political climate is people remembering the importance of listening rather than being so polarized and angry because someone has a perspective that doesn't align with your viewpoint. I mean, some perspectives, I'm going to be honest, are not negotiable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, but, yeah. but for the most part, they're, they're, they're worthy of conversation. Um, and so speaking of your Wake County bias, uh, Linda said, um, she grew up in a small North Carolina town on the East Coast. Are you also from Raleigh? I'm not from Raleigh. I'm from a small town in eastern North Carolina, not near the coast. Um, Hope Mills, it's outside Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. So I lived there until I was 18 years old. And uh, that experience, it it's part of my story. It is. And I'm not ashamed of it. Like, I still keep in touch with people from um, that little town and it made me who I am. So I'm proud. Sweet. I'm never leaving Wake County though. <laughs> you're never leaving. You say well, that, but if you're going to get to the White House, you got to leave Wake. Just that's saying. true. I'll keep my <laughs> house and go up there during the week. That's all I can commit to. <laughs> no one's going to let you be president part-time. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. I don't know. I'm a single mom. I can do a lot of things part-time. Now, this is a, 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 tr a true statement. <laughs> Single moms are superheroes. <laughs> Wait, you yes. can't see it. I, it's back gonna, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. No, this whole thing is there weird. We there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So we, we've talked about growing up. What was growing up like in the small town for you since you mentioned, you know, your experience shaped you? Well, um. I saw a lot of uh, racism. I did. I saw a lot of racism growing up. Um, I remember my fifth grade teacher, and I don't think this is necessarily racism, but he told our class, he was like, Fayetteville, North Carolina is not even a dot on the map for the rest of the planet. Like, no one knows where this place is. No one cares about this place. Like nobody cares. Ouch. Yeah. I remember in fifth grade, I was just like, why would he say that? Like, and he was just a bitter man and didn't <laughs> want to do what he was doing. But um, yeah, I saw, I saw a lot of things, but anyway, moving on, moving on. So you've talked about some of the things you enjoy about your job. You love wearing cowboy boots. You like, was it timber cruising, they call it? What are some other fun terms you've learned as a part of your job? Um, crossover was one. Um, silviculture. I did not know that was the other word for forestry. <laughs> is, what is it? Silviculture. It's like silviculture. Okay. I learned something today. Yeah, culture. Um, <laughs> cool. Who knew? I, I had no idea. So this this has been fun. Um, and so in your current role, learning all of the things you know now, um, what kind of skills and qualities would somebody who wants to be a communications director in, at a nonprofit like need to have? 
Well, um, we've kind of touched on this a little bit already, but listen, like, listen, because people always have, no matter who they are, they always have an interesting story to tell. Like, um, if you can check your agenda at the door and give people like 30 minutes to say what they need to say, you are going to find out so much information. People, most people have struggled through some type of hardship, like, and that to me is really interesting because I think our society is built on, you know, success, success, success. But we have to talk about failure, too, because it's a part of most people's stories. Um, and then another thing I would say is write, like take every opportunity you can to write, volunteer to write blog posts, volunteer to write articles, practice writing on social media because people will comment and call you out. Um, you have to be a good writer in order to be a good communicator because a lot of, you know, press releases, articles, social media, um, committee meetings, board meeting notes, like all of it, like you, you have to be good at writing. Um, Funny story when I so I went to Carolina undergrad and in my sophomore year, you have to apply to business school. Um, and oh. I got in and graduated from the business school. I'm really proud of that. But I almost did not get in because I got a 60 percent on the writing portion of the application. What? They almost didn't let you in because of that? Well, it. It was a piece of the application. And so they told me I needed to go to the writing center and work with a mentor. But I think it's interesting because I remember hearing that and I knew I was bad at writing. Like I just knew it. Um, but I took it kind of as a personal mission. Like I got to fix this thing. Like it's important to know how to write. Um, and I ended up like for 20 years writing engineering proposals, writing press releases, like Writing is what I do now, and I can communicate thoughts in a clear way. Um, but I think, you know, like that was kind of a failure to me, but I took it and turned it into something that is now my career. So, yeah, that, that's a great point. I think a lot of times we look at our failures and, and we say, OK, well, this is all falling apart. And you said, look, this is a, a, a problem I can solve. That, that that's pretty powerful if we could just kind of take sometimes our failures and go, OK, here's a problem. Here's a solution. I know a lot of times I talk about like resilience and also remind people that sometimes you have to decide whether or not it's a goal to continue pursuing and why. Like, I don't feel like changing your mind is the worst thing. Um, yeah, you kept I, right I do. I think we're complicated people. And the more information, the more information you have, then you make different decisions. And that's OK. Yeah, very much. Yeah, but no, thank you for sharing that story and how you, you took this one moment in, in college and, and turned it into a 20 plus year career writing. I don't know if it was like a decision I made in college, but looking back, I'm like, oh, that looks like it ties together. <laughs> no, it's just a, hindsight, not a right? <laughs> hindsight, yeah, very much so. Um, is there anything I haven't asked that you would like to share? Well, speaking on that um, importance of recognizing that failures are a part of stories, um, I wanted to bring this up because I'm uncomfortable with it, but I feel like it needs to be said because I think it's a part of most people's story and I think people don't talk about it. And so that means we should. So. I think a successful career conversation includes failures. And so I've been laid off or let go three times in my life. Wow. Yep. So How the first go? time um, I worked for a company that provided contract engineers to a heavy machinery manufacturer here and they got bought and all administrative sales marketing was considered redundant. And so we were let go. That was actually my first job. Um, and I was kind of, I mean, it's scary. It's not fun being let go. It's terrifying. Mm -hmm. Um, especially when you're paying mortgage. It, well, there wasn't a mortgage then, but you know, you got bills. Oh yeah. Um, and then I got laid off because of COVID. 
last July, actually, because, wait, is that right? In 2020, yeah, because our firm, I was supporting commercial development group, site civil uh. group, and they, things, they just weren't having a lot of success because phones stopped ringing, people stopped answering the phone, and development kind of got put on hold for a little bit because nobody knew what was happening, and um, <clears throat> got let go from that job, and again, that was really shocking, um, but also two months later was in this role. And I think I would not have been looking for this role if I still had that other job. So I think the timing was just impeccable. Like I'm doing what I love now because of that. So that is, yeah. I consider that a success. And then the third instance, um, I struggled with how to say this this week because I've been thinking about this a lot and um my termination came about because I reported um sexual harassment to the HR department. Oh no. Yeah. And I honestly was just naive and not realizing how political a large corporation could be and how they protect their own. And the people who knew about it were just like, I have never experienced that from him in my entire life, even though it was two of us that reported it. So anyway, um, wow, that was that's a success, too, because that was obviously not the right place for me. Well, I'm sorry you had to deal with that. I, I and I'm and it's honestly it's so many of our stories of different kinds of harassment and different things. And I'm proud of you for speaking up for yourself. Yeah. It it's hard when you speak up for yourself and people one don't believe you and then say, That's never been my experience with him. And I'm like, You're a man. Um but yeah. I know what happened and I hesitated to even say it because I was, but I know, I know what happened. I was there and it happened, but um, all these things had to lead me to where I am today. And I love my job. I have some things on my plate that the association has set in place for years and years, like website, newsletter, uh, magazine, um, and then I get the opportunity to follow some creative passions I have around storytelling and video. And um, I love being able to educate and engage with folks in North Carolina about how important forestry is to the environment and our economy. So here I am. <laughs> so, so all of the lemons thrown at you have made a, a wonderful lemonade. <laughs> It really has. I mean, my life's not perfect. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, yeah, no, I, it's I pretty like... great. Well, I'm so glad you were willing to share your story and your and your failures and your successes with us and the importance of writing as far as, you know, moving into communications roles and how it doesn't really go away. You know, I don't imagine that if we work for another 20 years, it's going to suddenly be, okay, AI writes your your press release for you. It'll never be as good. <laughs> uh, there are just some things you, you can't give to a robot. <laughs> no. Or, that or machine human learning. Connection. Yeah, you have to, the human connection. Yeah. All right, well, if I've, kind of work through everything that I, I wanted to cover today and talking about successes and failures. This is not at all how I planned for the show to go with me kind of like broadcasting from my loft, sitting on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> but I have enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much for your flexibility and, and your openness today, Amanda. I'm going to end the broadcast. You and I can talk a little bit. Um, Linda says, thank you, Amanda. You need a great talk. I saw a comment earlier. Thanks. Thanks, Linda. I saw a comment from, from Gia earlier. She said, I'm surprised to see how many don't have hobbies. Now that's the truth. Um, I feel like at 35, I'm trying to figure out what a hobby looks like. This is my attempt at a hobby, actually. <laughs> so it's a pretty I, impressive hobby. Well, well, like thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> so um, we'll, we'll see how this goes. I'm enjoying it so far, even with all the crazy things that have unfolded. It has kept me mindful of some of my own core values. Um, so yeah, until next week, wonderful people. Um, I have another cool guest coming up next week. I hope you guys watch. It is on the 22nd. Uh, so stay tuned to LinkedIn and Facebook pages so that you can get the announcement on who's coming. Love y'all. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>